Q99.7. From the John Foy Strong Arm Studios. Q99.7. Atlanta, Atlanta, what's happening? It's your boy Mario, and I'm hanging out with my girl. You already know, Jade on Q99.7, Atlanta. Um, I was thinking about y'all while I was in the bed, like, oof. I, I started know at 5, because I got up this morning and worked out just to, like, get my energy right for the day. Yes. So, yeah, I started at 5. Well, technically 4.45, but yeah. Okay, wonderful. Well, yeah. tell us, how has Atlanta been treating you? I know you stepped out the other night for a show, so yeah. how's it been? The love was incredible. The show was crazy. We did, like, 12 12 to 13,000 in literally 21 days. Okay, They started wow. late with the promo, but the show was still did great. And, uh, was this your Champagne and Roses tour, or was this the uh, music, R&B music, and this comedy? Is, this was the, the, the comedy and music. So Rip Michaels, he does this okay. comedy and music thing, and he's been killing it all over the U.S., so... I signed on to do a few shows with him. I think this was our last one. So. Okay, yes, how was, was that? What, to commit Atlanta to Atlanta being the worlds. last stop is like it was perfect. Perfect. It's like one of my favorite places to perform. It's like I broke so many records here in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? I broke Break Up here. I broke. Yes. Oh, that's um, the that's the ATL classic broke here. Uh, few records so yeah. absolutely break up will forever be in atlanta's heart yeah. like yeah. <laughs> absolutely sure. so okay i saw last night on your story you said um when you were on stage i sing to my ascending self there's ascending no self. uh no time here uh just space and room to possibility to grow so can exactly. you just talk Infinite about possibilities yeah can yeah. we just talk about that a bit uh i think i just think it's my mindset you know i try to drop gems just to kind of bring my fans closer to like my mindset about life and motivate people to just like you know be present but don't get lost so much in the material world. You know what I mean? Stay, stay imaginative. There's a secret in the imagination. You know? Yes. Um, there's a lot of possibilities and imaginations. And I feel like God in the universe is just really just giving you what the vibration you hold back to you. So, um, And I just feel like before it happens here, it happens in the heavens first. Mm-hmm. You know, it happens elsewhere. So I kind of like think about that as I perform it when I sing. So it's just kind of like a... I guess you could say pray, my praise and worship. Yes, I love that. <laughs> okay, so yeah. um, I saw this awesome video of you, uh, and it definitely took me back to childhood days, being with, yeah. being with my sister, waiting on the dial up to, to get ready. You, you were doing an okay. AOL Sessions interview. Okay. 15 years old, had just come out, and you were talking about meeting, meeting Stevie Wonder, yes. having great advice from Alicia Keys, her showing you the ropes, and... Also, it was crazy just because I was like, wow, this was AOL sessions. You were, I'm talking about just getting into online school while you yeah. were touring. Wow. So for I you think to- I remember the one you're talking about. I was, yes. like, I, was I had a, I had the brace still. Yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. wonderful. I was just like, oh my God, 15. <laughs> you looked so young, but were yeah. so already like so knowledgeable about yeah. what was going to happen with you. Just having been able to see d- these different generations of music yeah. and how in the way that we know that art and music always imitates what's happening in life for you guys as R&B sing- songwriters, composers, singers, yeah. uh, just to see the world that we live in today, how much things have changed, how much more open people are to having kind of relationship conversations yeah. about things that may not be so traditional. How has that uh, just affected you personally and your writing and the music that you're making today? Because you've seen it and sang it all. Yeah, I think more than anything, it 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 challenges me to be more vulnerable in my music, right? Because people, they don't want surface conversations anymore. They're open to like deeper conversations and like conversations outside of just, oh, love or just whatever. Like you literally can talk about what you're going through on a day-to-day basis through your music. So, yes. But I'm waiting for the album for that. Okay. Singles, I try to make broad conversations that mm-hmm. everybody can relate to. Like main one, for example, which we'll get into. Yes. The project is where I kind of will dive in and kind of give you layers through interludes and music. And that's going to be fun. If I'm, I'm doing that topic next year, I'll start the, the album. Okay, yeah. definitely. I also saw that you said you wanted to, um, that if you had made a soundtrack or you were a part of collaborating on a soundtrack, you would want it to be something pretty dark, something like a Jordan Peele film. Yeah, so I, I like I like depth and contrast because I feel like that's what life is. And I feel like I've, I come from that growing up in Baltimore. I grew up around a lot of contrast, a lot of darkness, and a lot of light at the same time because there was a lot of love, but there's also a lot of loss. So um, I think I've never expressed that through my music. So I think these other mediums are a great way to do it without, yeah. you know, I guess, without attaching myself to it and having to, like, like, like exist as it every day. It's like I've healed a lot, mm-hmm. but I also have all of these creative ideas that come from it. So it's like I can't escape that. You feel me? Absolutely. It's contrast. Yeah. Yes, so let's get into main one. Of course, yeah. you know, we've been playing you nonstop on the radio. For sure, man. And sure. Um, it's um, awesome to see you and Wayne link back up yep. to, to do it with Tyga. Can you tell us about the day of the video? The house was yeah. gorgeous. The girls were gorgeous. Man, that process, I'm very hands-on. Every girl is handpicked by 
yours truly so fellas okay. you're welcome <laughs> um, but no like honestly it's like I even had a, a shot of me like and a girl singing behind the scenes if you look on my IG like my videos don't feel like stuffy and like boozy like it's we really were having a good time yeah. we were just trying to make the best like reminiscent of the early 2000s type of vi yes. video yes shout out to Ben Mark you know he really got my vision off top and you know I told him I wanted him to do something that was like classic classy still sexy summertime vibes but I want the shots to feel like a movie and so he really did a good job at um helping bring that vision to life. Everybody had a good time on set. You know, it was just like regular day, yes. day in the life of, of Tiger, Mario, and Wayne. Like, it was, it was fun. Absolutely. It was like summertime vibes. I love it. Yeah. You're so um, hands-on with, your your fans are, they go hard for you. They always they have since they won. Hard. I love that you talk to them as if, you, even if you don't know them, that you feel that you know them because you know that they're coming from a good place. And you have responded to um, one of your fans in the comments. And she was like, Rio. Oh, main one, you got me feeling a tough way with some of these lyrics, but you were right. like, well, I'm just being honest about the fact that when you start dating somebody, it could be toxic if you're faking what's going on in your world and in your life. So bring some honesty Listen, to the table. Exactly. And I love I love that you no, opened that up. It, yeah, I think that we have to we have to start like kind of like, you know, being more honest in our conversations when it comes to relationships and me like you don't have to lie to kick it. I was basically saying, like, you don't have to lie to somebody about who you are in order to, like, reel them in, and then they're going to find out who you are later. Yeah. You know, I'm just trying to break that cycle. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's okay to have fun. Listen, fellas, women have options, too. They just don't tell you about it all the time. <laughs> see, the difference between men and women is this. Women will actually drop their options if they feel like they're going to move forward with true, you. True, true. Men will try to keep their options as long as possible. Ooh. You feel me? And yeah. so, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's it's It's, it's just funny an because I think that guys don't even realize that girls are a little more, they they will surprisingly go for probably more than you think if you tell them up front, you know, because you give oh, them the option. Listen, that's facts. Yeah. It's facts. I promise you, like, when I stop lying, <laughs> my, it, my, it's just my relationships, my, my, even my friendships with women change. You yes. Know what I'm There's some girls that I start dating and I'm like, you know what? We're going to just be friends. Yes. And that's okay. Because of the honesty is there. And it's just like sometimes friendships outlast relationships. And yeah. that's all right too. So you just it's, never know. You just got to be honest. You just got to be real. And it's yeah. just less stressful. And it's less karma and it's less everything. So. Yes, definitely. Because, yeah. I mean, an initial attraction brings, brings people together, but yeah. people could miss out on just having dope friends, like you said. I agree. It and that's me, needed. That's it, needed. It's important for, yes. for me. It's important for me to have healthy because I had a lot of toxic um, relationships with, like, women in my family growing up, mm. specifically my mom. But, like, it's important for me to have healthy relationship with women that's platonic as well. Yes. You feel me? Like, it's, it's important. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so... It's not the easiest every time, all the time. But it's <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> As we're celebrating, like, 21 years since your debut album, which mm -hmm. is crazy. I mean, there are some videos, some some moments that are cemented into, like, our, our time in history. Turning yes. on the TV, always seeing you there. So, 21 years later, can you tell me um, what you don't stress about so much anymore and what's mm. the most important to keep for, like, like you were just talking about... Um, there are so many uh, different facets to entertainment today that we feel like we got to keep tabs on every little thing that we do yeah. and how we put things out. For that kid in the mm -hmm. basement at home who's practicing every single night, what what is most important to know and to not get lost in the other things that can fade? Even if you climb heights with it, mm -hmm. you, it can fade away. But like, yeah. make sure you stick to the talent and what um, else? I think that it's just refining, you know. Sometimes you got to give yourself flowers for your, your accomplishments, your growth. You know, recognize where your strengths are and your weaknesses as you continue to grow. And um, I would say master your strengths and focus on your weaknesses. Um, and I think that's something that's going to continue to help you to evolve. And also study other people's crafts. Like yes. the people around you, everybody around you, understand why they're important in your whole journey, whether it be social or you know, your visuals, your your styling, everything, because everything we're doing is we're creating. Right. We're creating, we're influencing, we're we're telling our story with everything that we do. Um, and I think that's really important for artists to understand. Also, it's like it's not just about the talent, it's also about your story. Learning how to tell your story and be okay. If you're gonna be an artist, mm. then you have to be okay being very uncomfortable. And that's where the magic is at. Yeah. And um that's something that I had to learn, you know. Um as I continue to grow, because as a as a child star, you know, it was I didn't have a lot of control, creative control, mm -hmm. right? And so as I 
started demanding more creative control, it caused me to have to be more uncomfortable. Yes. Right? And so you got to be okay with that. In order to grow, you have to be uncomfortable and you have to be ready to have the hard conversations and, and be vulnerable and also, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. Like a lot of times you're doing, being an artist is one of the most, um, I would say, alone experiences you'll ever have because though you could be in a room full of a million people, your gift and your story and talent, it takes a lot to like, can you, do you ever feel like you relate? Like, do you ever feel like somebody right. can actually relate to your personal, like what you've walked um, through? Yes, I do. Because I've had people come to me and tell me that they can relate to my story in terms of not even music. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, I know you're talented, but I relate to this story you told with your mom. Or I relate to the fact you came from Baltimore. You grew up with 18 people in the household. Like, I relate to mm -hmm. that. Those are the types of things that I, I think that help people to connect to you and create longevity. Yes. Right? Um, I think a lot of people think it's just about the talent, just about the music. No, it's about this. Mm. It's about real connection. Um, and I want to keep that because we, we don't want AI to take over everything. Do okay. We? How do you feel you know about that? That's we don't want AI wild. to take over everything. We we want to <laughs> keep real connections. We want to keep real writers. We want to keep real yes. real stories. You know, um, who's going to tell our future? Right. You know what I'm saying? Who's going to tell the future talents what this was like? You know what I'm saying? And I feel like we got to keep some of it raw and organic. Yes. Or else we're going to lose that connection. You know, social media is enough. It's, it creates a lot of division, even yeah. though in some ways it brings us together, but in some ways it can create that. So we got to keep the stories coming. We got to keep the rawness in. It's just something that I'm I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about really connecting. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, I know you've probably had this conversation many a times, but I, I just can't let the day go by with that, uh, without just touching on verses for a second because yeah. when I tell you, I was, <laughs> I was having the best night of my life looking yeah. through my phone. You had your popcorn. Uh -huh. Oh, it was, when I tell you, you had me cackling, smiling, laughing, yeah. singing along the whole time. Yeah. That was a Baltimore smackdown. Hey, listen, like, it had to happen. It was, it was, it was set up that way. Absolutely. Was, Can you just talk about like even a moment like that, somebody being able to pioneer something through verses to like even yeah. bring the culture um, all together and to celebrate the best of the best for you guys. Yeah. Uh, like afterwards, the love that you treat afterwards or maybe yeah. features that came about people talking. Did you just feel like did you feel, you know, the flowers that everyone was feeling for like sure. they were I giving? Mean, I, let's just be, uh, to keep it 100. It's just like anytime you're on a platform that's like so like versus is very controversial. Right. Even right. though we may love every artist that come on there, it's still like, okay, this is like two artists being put on a spot, even if they're friends, to yeah. compete with who's going to say you got, and you got the, the comments rolling. It's a lot of pressure, right? That's a lot. So, it's a lot. So at the end of the day, it's, of course, when you have millions of people watching, I think it was the biggest verses, right? So when you have that many people watching, of course, you're going to get, if you do well, you're going to get flowers. Mm -hmm. I killed it. Yes. I feel like I was just raw. Yes. I didn't plan anything out. I, I didn't have my whole set. I was going song my song. I'm like, okay, yo, I thought we was going to do this song, but no, nah, I throw this song on next. I'm gonna throw this song. On. I was just going <laughs> with what the energy was calling for. And so, um, yeah, I just think, I think Versus highlighted my personality, highlighted my talent, it highlighted the things that I hadn't really done through social media. Yes, so it right, did, because I was like, I know person. Mario got down like that. You feel me? <laughs> I so, loved it. It was like, yeah, that shit was just... It was lit. It was lit. It was super lit. Yeah. Okay, so can we take a quick stroll down yeah. memory lane back to Baltimore? I love the story that you've told about um, your mom buying you a karaoke set when you yeah. were eight, performing at the Leak House, putting together, putting on a show. Um, the Leak House. Yes. Wow. Grandma and everybody. So can you just tell me, like, wow. when you first? Um, That's when my do great. You... Wait, we can't just go past that. <laughs> Let's get into she just it. She said the Leak. So the Leak family. That's my basically my great grandmother's last name. So that's like. Where it all starts, right? And obviously, it starts before her. I didn't know my great great grandmother, um, but so my great great my great grandmother and her sister had two houses on in Edmondson Village. That's where we kind of grew. Our family grew up in Baltimore, and then her sister moved to Philly, so I got Philly and Baltimore. So she's speaking about the lady who kind of like who had eight kids, including my grandmother, and my grandmother had four, and so yeah. She's talking about the Lee family. That's, yes. That's crazy. I, I, that, the that, roots. That, I just love sure. that so much because I'm like, yeah. it's one thing to be in your room or doing chores and singing to yourself and be yeah. like, I got a little something. But it's different when your family didn't know that you had this amazing, you know, something. Yeah, my mother, with you. my mother, she was um a connoisseur of music. She played the piano. She also just played a lot of good music. She she her taste was just very upper echelon when it came to good music. And so I think when she noticed I had the talent, she gave me a mic that tuned into the radio when I was like four. 
And um, she heard me singing one morning, and she noticed that. And she just did that as for fun. And she noticed that I could hold a note. Like, I was singing the same melody without the words, obviously. But, like, and she was like, she told me that she just kept the music around me because she just wanted me to have something that I was passionate about, mm. you know? Because there was a lot going on in Baltimore, a lot going on in the house all the time. So right. after that, when I was, like, eight, she got me a karaoke machine. My grandfather got me a drum set. And... um yeah, she just started putting me in talent shows. and How was your I would school say my talent first show? talent show was at home, you know what I'm saying? Just okay. Same for my family. But, like, that got me prepared to, like, do talent shows in schools and, and high schools and colleges. And then I got seen at a talent show when I was, like, 11, and that kind of led into me having meetings with J Records and so forth and so on. Wow. Yeah, so she started it. It was her and my family. Like, I wouldn't have been able to do it without them. For sure. That is incredible. Yeah. Incredible. So for you, celebrating your own 21 uh, years since your debut album, mm-hmm. you know, um, Crazy. What can you What can you even say? Like uh, you're still so 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 loved by so many. Uh, you make people cry, feel good, feel heard, feel seen. Yeah. After all this time, but still, we are still in love with you f- since the very beginning. I say that music is magic. I say that imagination is powerful. I say that talent is a tool. I say that we're vessels. I say that there's so many people that's been involved that don't get spoken about, from the engineers to. Mm. You know, the writers that worked on albums, my first album. There's so many moments that people don't know about. And I feel like those people definitely deserve their flowers. And I thank them. Um, I feel like I'm at a new phase in my life as a being, as an artist. And I'm just trying to bring everything full circle as possible so that I can I can feel good about what I'm doing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because, like, outside of this, when I go home, like, my practices, my spiritual practices, things that I love to do outside is, like, I want to bring a little bit of who I am outside of that into the next project and like mm-hmm. just four circle moments so that it can feel whole and so that the it can feel like a, a real gumbo in terms of yes. who I am as a being. So I think ultimately that's why some artists like really start to hate it is because they feel fragmented. And okay. I think, of course, it's like really hard to put all of who you are into a sound bite. Mm-hmm. But I think... Um, the more intentional it is, the closer you get to that. And so, like, I would say that about the 21 years. That's what I learned. Just, like, how to practice doing all of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. We're so excited. Can you tell us a little bit about yeah. what we can expect coming after this? Because we we're we dancing to this already. Yeah. We're playing it. We're watching it in the house. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, the video's out right now. Um, I'm about to go on a tour called Champagne and Roses Tour with yes. Neo and Robin Thicke. Yes, we've been giving touring. away tickets. Okay, fire. Y'all have been on it. Y'all on, we right. on it. <laughs> so, I, hope, I can't wait to see y'all there. Um, it's a great show. We've been doing like test shows all around the U.S. and they've been selling out and going crazy. So we're excited about it. I'm excited for Neo. This is this is a, a new phase of his career. You know, he's he wrote Let Me Love You. So he's a really big part of my yes. success. So it's a four circle moment and uh, it's cuffing season. So okay. it'll be a perfect time for you to bring out your new boo. <laughs> Perfect time for y'all, man. We set, we Beautiful set the stage night. for y'all. Yes, thank you so much for I'm coming. Can I ask you one rules. last thing? Because it would just make my childhood dreams come true. Yeah. Can you please sing "Let Me" a, a little bit of "Let Me Love You" for us? Uh, do you have a specific part? Um. What you? What you? Should we do the intro or the hook? Yeah, the intro. Okay, the intro because we want to feel okay. it from the beginning. Okay. Can I get some snaps or something? Mm. Ooh, uh, ooh, yeah, ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ooh, uh, oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Baby, I just don't get it. Do you enjoy being hurt? I know you smell the perfume, the makeup on his shirt. You don't believe his stories. You know that there are lies, bad as you are, you stick around, and I just don't know why, cause if I was your man, baby, you, <laughs> never worry about, what I do, I'll be coming home, back to you, every, every night, night, doing you right, you're the type of woman, deserves good things, fist full of diamonds, handful of rings, baby you're a star, and I just wanna show you you are, you should let me love you, let me be the one to give you everything you want and need, baby good love and protection, make me your selection, show you the way love supposed to be. Baby, you should let me 
<laughs> love you. <laughs> oh my god! I That's literally had to need, like baby. look in your eyes while it was happening. Like this is happening. It's happening. We love you. I love you too. I love Thank you, you for too. coming. It is such a yes. It's my iconic. Pleasure. Like thank you, thank you. Oh my god! There are no words. Just More so much love. More moments to come. More moments so much to love. Come. We can't I'm wait to see you at your show. Yeah, <laughs> see you there.